Hello, 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 and welcome back to Wellywood Wargaming. In this episode, I'm going to be exploring my favourite chapter in the entirety of the Warhammer 40,000 lore. We're actually going to be looking at one of the Badab chapters. Uh, what I mean by this is the, um, the Badab War. We're going to be exploring that, and I'm going to be doing a series of painting tutorials, or very brief grimdark speed painting tutorials on each of the Loyalist and maybe even um, you know, rebellion uh, sort of chapters in the Badab War law. But we're going to start here with the Minotaurs. Um, like I said, my favorite chapter in the entirety of 40k law um, for various reasons. Um, but starting off here, we are going with a Balthazar gold, which despite its name is not actually a gold. It's definitely more of a brassy bronze. And um, we're going to slap that all over this miniature with a white undercoat underneath. The reason being for white undercoat is it just gives a slightly more bright and metallic look than over black, for example. But yeah, getting back to these Minotaurs, um, they are heavily sort of Spartan and Greek themed. Um, in the actual sort of lore of the Badab War, they um, dispatch the entirety of their chapter to deal with the traitor scum and um, certainly did some pretty horrendous things. I think taking out the entirety of the Lamenters chapter pretty much down to a man. Um, so yeah, boo-hoo Lamenters. But nobody likes yellow anyway, it doesn't look that great. Sorry Imperial Fists guys. Um, anyway, the, the next thing I'm gonna talk about quickly is a lot of people who do Minotaurs um, painting tutorials tend to use Agrax Earthshade at this point over the Balthazar Gold, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna dispense with the brown because it's a bit boring and a bit flat and a bit too dirty. And I'm actually gonna bring in some Druki Violet, which I know is a little bit different. And you might be thinking, Damon, you're mental. But I'm not mental because you'll see what happens when I put it on. So I'm gonna do a all over wash now, quite a heavy wash of Druki Violet. And you will see that this makes things look far more bronzy than the Agrax Earthshade does, in my opinion. Um, now, I could be completely wrong. Um, you might not agree with this, but again, this is my way of doing it. This is a speed painting grimdark tutorial, so please don't, um, you know, don't critique it too hard because it's, it's meant for beginners. It's meant for those of you that just can't be asked, basically, and just want to do decent enough, um, grimy, realistic looking miniatures. Of course, the miniature that I'm actually using in this instance is one of the Aeronautica Imperialis Adeptus Astartes Storm, uh, Storm Ravens, I think. I can't actually remember what this, the type of ship's called because they all look quite similar, to be honest. But um, fantastic game if you haven't played it. Anyway, moving on, we're going to be uh, using some Black Templar contrast paint here just to be filling in some of the black details. So inside the sort of fronts of those sort of engines we've got on the front there vents on the top and bottom of the um, vehicle as well including the missile pods on the top as well as uh, well basically anything that isn't hard armor i suppose anything that's internal the exhausts uh, and a few other little sort of key details now it doesn't really matter if you spill over any of this black onto the armor at this point because we are going to go back to the armor in a, in a second um, and actually do a sort of sort of highlight or several layers of highlight and that will cover over any of the mistakes that you may have made uh, when you um, go over it with any of this black here obviously you want to be as neat as possible but you don't have to you don't have to be too careful this is grimdark so fuck all the complete and utter um, you know neat and tidy stuff it just doesn't suit the vibe here um, so don't be too neat and tidy is all I'm saying as you can see, that's that. So we've done the black and we've done the, um, you know, the sort of up down thrusters, should I say, um, to allow this vehicle to hover. Um, and uh, yeah, some of the other black details on the miniature have been filled out there as well. Um, the next thing we're gonna be doing is actually doing a nice heavy all over dry brush of Balthazar Gold again, just to bring it back to the sort of metallic luster that it had before. We put the Druki Violet wash all over it. Now I've taken it off the base here just because I think I'm gonna need a bit more of a sturdy um, hand because this is quite a heavy dry brush. I'm actually, um, you know, you can see the, so the miniature's actually moving, so I'm hitting it fairly hard. I'm not just dusting it um, because we do wanna bring a lot of that color back into the miniature with the Balthazar Gold. So that's uh, that's pretty heavy. Um, now you don't need to worry too much about the sort of underside of the vehicle because you're never actually gonna see it. Uh, I think it's kind of a waste to paint parts of miniatures that don't ever get the human eye on them, personally, but um, maybe I'm just a heretic, who knows. Um, now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna switch out to a makeup brush. So I've got a makeup, um, 
very soft rounded bristle makeup brush here. And I'm gonna get some Cycorax Bronze, which is a another Citadel paint here. This is a layer paint. It's very, very bright um, coppery bronze here. Now, um, of course, removing most of the paint from my brush here, we're just gonna lightly dust um, all of those raised edges, particularly on the top where the light hits it. Um, and just give it a nice sort of final sort of highlight here. Now you could go a little bit further. You could go to a very, very bright silver one up from this uh, and sort of edge highlight, highlight it or perhaps give it just a few little sort of pinpoints of detail if you really wanted to. And I probably would if it was on a bigger miniature or one of my actual Minotaur Space Marines. But for this, and for the sake of doing a very quick video, I'm just gonna leave it here with the highlights, to be honest, with the Cycorax bronze, because I do think it looks good enough. It looks realistic. It doesn't look over the top. Um, it doesn't stand out too much, um, but it's nice and vibrant. As you can see, it really catches the light there as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move over to uh, Lead Belcher, which is a very, you know, gunmetal sort of color from Citadel. And we're just going to do those sort of down thrusters on the edges there and any of the other sort of details that we want to do in a sort of gunmetal, I suppose. So that means the um, quad las cannons, I think they are called. It also means the heavy bolters on the front and um, some of the other details as well as the um, engine exhausts too. Um, but yeah, really, really lovely miniatures to paint these. Um, and I'm looking forward to... Uh, doing the other Badab War chapters. So um, can you guess what I'm gonna do next? Can you guess which one I'm gonna do next? Probably not, um, but I had to start with Minor Tools just because I do love the chapter. The lore is just so cool. They're very much a Spartan chapter um, with a little bit of hint of um, red in their sort of chapter colors normally. Um, of course, the image that I brought up earlier didn't actually have any red on it. Um, they used to be um, slightly different before they before they um, sort of modernized them. They used to be uh, not bronze actually, they were sort of yellow and red, um, but now they are um, most definitely bronze. Uh, the next thing I'm just gonna do quickly is start bringing out a, um, a red into the equation actually now that I'm talking about that. So this is the accent color that I'm gonna be using on this paint job. Uh, with any sort of grimdark uh, paint job that I do, I tend to keep the palette incredibly um, minim minimalistic I suppose and just usually use two to three colors uh, and variations of colors and highlights there as well but as you can see I'm going to kind of use a stippling motion uh, with this red here I can't actually remember the name of the red to be honest I'll have to bring this up at the end of the list but I think it's uh, I want to say flesh tear is red but I think that might be a contrast color there so um, anyway it's one of the reds as you can see a sort of mid to bright reddish citadel color here um, and I'm just gonna slap that onto a couple of key details, not too much. I would say that generally on a Space Marine, the Minotaur's red parts are usually any fabrics, which are usually quite minimal, and also the insides of the shoulder guards as well, which is kind of why, in terms of placement, I went with the, the wing arches there as well, because it almost represents that um, center of the shoulder pad being red as well. Um, but I, f I felt like going with the doors too. Now the next thing I do here is I um, hit it with, um, I think this is actually Flesh Terra's red and that is a, indeed a contrast paint. It's slightly darker, of course, than the um, sort of layer red that we just put on there. Um, and I put this all over just to sort of darken it down so that it blends in with the um, purplish tones on the, um, the bronze there as well. So that's gonna go all over the red. Um, after that, of course, we're gonna go with um, well, you'll see what I'm gonna go with in a second. But um, yeah, just making every effort with sort of contrast paints here, not to um, leave things too splodgy. You kind of want quite a lot of paint on the brush, but just you don't want it to pull too much. So just make sure you drag it around and make it sort of evenly spread. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually go back to that initial red color and just start stippling it on. Um, what I mean by that is just poking little dots onto it, um, not right up to the edges, but to make it look like actual paint that was actually put on by a real human being. Um, we're just gonna sort of stipple it on so that there's a few areas of sort of blotchiness. Um, it just gives it a much more realistic sort of vibe. It's also a very matte um, compared to the shine of the gold there as well. Um, a really, very matte red, I think, really complements the, um, the shine of the sort of, I, sh I shouldn't say gold, I should say bronze, of course, because it isn't, it isn't actually gold despite the name. Um, but yeah, just stippling on with the red here uh, really does give it a nice bit of pop. 
um, and that little small little accent color really does carry the rest of it because I do feel that if you left it completely bronze all over it's going to look a bit dull and a little bit boring to be honest um, as you can as you can see there's the red done so we've done the two wings and we've done the two doors there as well and that's just drying at the moment um, but that's pretty much that for the red we're then going to go in while that's drying we're going to go in with some null oil shade and just do all the gun metal parts there as well to give them a thorough shading now i have noticed that the sort of null oil pot that i've got is definitely not how it used to be i don't know if games workshop has changed the formula on their shades but i would sort of um hazard a guess that it's slightly more diluted it's not quite as um doesn't stain doesn't stain as much it goes into the recesses more but it doesn't stain the metal as much which for me i don't actually like as much i prefer the old slightly more inky formula for these shades because um, i actually really want to dull things down so i tend to have to use several coats of the new known oil if it indeed it is a new known oil um, in this case i did just use one though um, so pardon me for saying that but um, the next thing here as i've gone down to a smaller brush and i'm actually stippling on a bit of white scar here which is a pure white layer um, it is quite thin this paint which is why i'm stippling it on in sort of multiple layers i kind of now there's i guess most people would want to do this very very smooth um, for the windows here um, but i kind of wanted a bit of texture on it for some for some bizarre reason and i just thought uh, having a little bit of texture on it, it will give it some visual interest even though it is supposed to be glass I think it will give the illusion of stuff behind the glass if I just gave it a little bit of texture so I've done that I've then gone back with ethermatic blue I believe it's called which is a um, very sort of vivid bluish turquoise contrast paint and we're now dragging it all over the dry white scar on the windows just to give it a sort of almost like a glowing effect i suppose um, now i'm not necessarily sure whether this is the right sort of color to represent a window but to be honest once i finish with this miniature i think it's going to work just fine again i could go a lot further with this and do some more detail uh, on areas like this but i just don't think it's going to suit the rest of the model if i if i pay too much attention to detail on that stuff Anyway, so looking at it, we're at a stage now where things are pretty much almost finished, certainly in terms of the base, um, the base coats, the sort of m m the main highlights, and of course the, the sort of washes and shades as well. But we're just gonna make these engines look a little bit more realistic by hitting them with some more black Templar um, and just sort of coating the end of the engines to make it look like they're actually, um, you know, have got some sort of muzzle burn on them, I suppose is the term um, so doing that with some black templar is pretty good you can thin this down and do it in multiple layers but to be honest in this video i just couldn't be asked so i just uh, i went and hit it straight away um, and it looks kind of it looks fine because again we're going to do a final step here uh, which will make things make the entirety of the miniature sort of blend in a little bit more the next thing i do is actually go back with a pure chaos black and just do the very rims of the back of the engines just to um, you know have an almost a slight gradient from the null oil lead belcher to the black templar to the chaos black as well um, just to make things look extra extra burnt around the very crispy edges of those engines as you can see so the next thing I'm going to do is get a little piece of sponge. This piece of sponge is, or well, you can use any sponge, you can use a kitchen sponge, it really doesn't matter. But what I tend to do here is just tear off a piece, very, very small piece, and um, make somewhat of a rugged looking sort of edge. What you don't want is just a completely flat edge for the sponge, you, will, you want a bit of a rugged edge there. And the next thing we're gonna use is a little bit of a very dark brown. Now you can, you can use any dark brown, it really doesn't matter here. I've gone for, I can't remember the name of the color here. I think it's Dryad Bark actually off the top of my head. Um, um, and I'm just gonna tap the miniature with very, very little of this on the edges and the raised areas um, in a somewhat random way. So what I don't wanna do here is do anything that creates any sort of pattern because then that will take away the realism with the sort of chipping and stuff. Um, what you do want to do is rotate the sponge and rotate the miniature a little bit um, where you can, just so you've got a little bit of variation uh, in this stuff as well. Now you could go a little bit further than this as well and go in with maybe a lead belcher or a silver, but I think with the gold, we don't want to 
take away too much from the, the bronze, sorry. Um, and I'm just gonna leave it there with the brown there as well. You can see along the bottom, underneath the door frame and stuff there, I went a bit heavier with it. I just think that gives it a bit more sort of visual interest. It looks like it's actually landed um, in some dirty, dusty planes and stuff and, uh, you know, disengorged some very, very scary Marines into the battlefield. Right then, now this is the interesting part. This is where we're gonna get involved with some oils. Um, we've got a burnt umber here, which if you're um, into doing grimdark painting at all, you're always gonna need a burnt umber oil paint to create washes with. Uh, burnt umber, in my opinion, is the most important and most used oil paint, along with black, of course. Uh, now you saw me take a little bit out there. You only need an absolutely tiny, minuscule amount of oil paint um, for an oil wash. Um, we also have some odorless mineral spirits there, which I, of course, pour all over the kitchen table as I'm doing this um, and create an absolute fucking mess, which is fine. We don't, we don't care. This is the whole point in the whole grimdark thing is everything's very messy and nothing's tidy and clean. Um, but that's the point. You lose your in inhibitions and you just um, enjoy painting and enjoy being artistic with it. I think that's um, what's the nicest thing about the whole grimdark style for me. Anyway, mixing this down with, as you can see, I'm not gonna give you precise measurements here, but you can see this is quite a watery consistency, uh, making sure to get rid of any lumps and bumps of the burnt umber there. We're actually going to go a little bit further with this though and add another color to this wash, just to give it a slightly different um, overall effect. And we're gonna go with an ivory black. Does not matter which kind of oil paints you use, they're pretty much all the same when it comes to using them as an oil wash. Of course, if you were actually an artist and you were using them on paintings, I'm sure there would be quite a bit more in terms of variables, but if you're using them on miniatures like this, um, don't worry about it, just get the cheapest shit that you can and bash it all on. So a little bit less black than we have burnt umber. We've definitely got um, about, I'd say probably about two to one burnt umber to black. You probably could go a bit um, lighter on the black actually and heavier on the burnt umber, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter unless you know, you're know you creating, you know, you're painting lots and lots of miniatures and you want it to be consistent, then you're gonna need to measure these things out. For one miniature, you don't need to at all. Next up is just slapping it all over the miniature, making sure that you coat the entirety of it. Don't miss any areas out. You will find though that because due to its sort of nature, the uh, oil wash will run into all the cracks and crevices and give it an almost sort of pin washing sort of effect. It will just sort of travel um, without you even having to push it there. So it's very, very easy to apply this. But what this is gonna do essentially is just bring everything together. Um, now it's not dry yet. We're just gonna, uh, we've coated the entire miniature in the wash, but we're gonna go back and we're gonna go back in with a cotton bud and just remove some of, certainly not all of, the um, surface sort of residue and grime and build up that you're gonna get from this wash. Um, now that's kind of the beauty of it really, the grime and the sort of um, the effect that it leaves afterwards, but you don't want it on all the raised areas. You kind of want to just sort of mop up some of that excess moisture on the top layers so that you've got a nice shiny glossy sort of um, effect on the top of the miniature and leaving the very sort of bottoms um, to be much more dirty looking and much more oily looking. But really here we are at the end. I would say once this is dry, we're calling this one done. We're gonna take some photos and we'll come back and we'll see how it's looking. But I'm fairly confident that um, I'm fairly happy. I've done this quite a lot of times with 40K miniatures. I've done an entire Minotaur's 40K Space Marine Army and I'm confident that it's gonna look good. Let's look at the photos. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Please do like, share, subscribe. Check out the Patreon and I will catch you in the next Badab War video. Peace the hell out.